Now today we're talking about clutch pressure control solenoid valves. Let me show you where that lives on this vehicle and I'll also show you on how I remove the battery and the battery tray. Many, many vehicles you may be able to get access to this valve by removing the splash shield. And if you need a guide on that, I'll include a separate link in the description box below showing you on how you can remove a splash shield. Now if we look in the engine bay all the way down here, let's wait until the camera catches up right here. This is one of those valves. Now this happens to be valve C. There's also valve A and valve B which lives on a different part of the transmission. But nonetheless, everything that I'll show you today, you can do the exact same thing on any of these valves. Now you can test this valve while it is still attached to the transmission. But in this case, because the working room here is so small and I can't give you a very good angle with the camera, I'm first going to remove the valve, place it on the bench, and perform the test there. But again, you don't have to do this. You can still perform all of these tests while it's still attached to the transmission. Let me just show you very, very quickly on how I removed and got access to, uh, to this valve. And then these are just two 10 millimeter, <clears throat> 10 millimeter fasteners. This looks a little bit bigger. Let me grab a 12. And then this is just the battery hold down tray. A couple of 10 millimeter fasteners. Then there's typically a plastic under tray. This has the battery looped into it. There we go. Now underneath the battery is the metal battery tray. So we have, that's a 10 millimeter fastener, two 10s, these are 12s, and then there's one sneaking on the side here. And then we'll be able to remove this and get clear access to all the sensors in fact. Now very quickly before we remove this valve, a couple of pointers I can give you. If you're not sure where the valve lives, and I say this all the time in other videos, but the first thing you could do is a Google image search for your specific vehicle. A lot of times you could pick up diagrams showing where the valve lives. Option two is to purchase a repair manual specific for your vehicle. You can typically purchase them for five, ten bucks. Get a PDF file, something off, like off eBay for example. Option three is to visit a forum that deals only with your vehicle. A lot of times you can find someone on there that just knows the vehicles inside and out. But even if you just do a, a part search for your vehicle just to see what the valve looks like, you can start, of, start to decipher what works, what's right, what's not right, and that sort of thing. So if we look at everything here, let me just clean this up. Right down here, this is a pressure switch, but this obviously doesn't look like the part. This is the uh, input or the main shaft speed sensor that we showed a few days ago. Just want to move this out of the way if I can. There we go. Here's the harness connector down here for the pressure valve. Just want to press on the tab. There we go. I'm pulling the body a little hard with one hand, but there we go. Move the wire harness as best as you can. And then if you look right here, there's one there's another one right over here, two, and two more underneath, 10 millimeter fasteners, and then we'll just remove the valve from the transmission. Now once you remove all the fasteners, this comes right off. This slid right off, in fact. Very, very easy to not stick, nothing like that. But also very quickly, I just want to show you, there's also a screen. A little hard to see, but right here, there's a screen in there. And we're going to remove that, make sure that it's not clogged up.
Okay, right. There we go. Okay. Now this little valve controls the flow of transmission fluid inside the transmission. Now behind this, the brains of the system is the PCM or the power control module. So if you take a look inside this valve, there's a pump, there's a motor in here or a solenoid valve that moves back and forth. And we're going to test that. If this does not move back and forth, the valve is, is completely shot. You need to replace it. So very, very simple operation in a sense. Now this guy that we removed, this is known as the ATF feed pipe. What happens is if this starts to clog up the screening in here, you certainly will have some symptoms. They could be a number of different things. You may have delayed shifts. Uh, the vehicle does not downshift. In other words, you come to a stoplight and the vehicle just doesn't downshift. Also erratic shifting. Let's say it bounces from third gear to second gear to third gear to second gear, that sort of thing. And most likely you will have a check engine light uh, on the dashboard. So let's start by testing the valve and also at the very end, also take a look at the harness connector. That's the connection that plugs into this. Make sure that there's no dirt, grime, grease, anything like that because it will affect the, uh, the way that this valve is supposed to work. Now the first thing we'll be doing is an ohms or a resistance test. To do that, you need a digital multimeter. This one I purchased off Amazon, does a terrific job, it was inexpensive. I'll include a link in the description box below if you do need a multimeter. You can do so many different tests with this thing. If you plan on doing your own auto repair, purchase one of these. It's an absolute uh, a must have. Now taking a look at on the meter here, you have a number of different tests. But the one that we need is the omega symbol. That is for a resistance or an ohms test, okay? So the multimeter has two leads, a black lead and a red lead. Taking a look at the sensor here, we have two prongs or two pin connectors. All that we're doing is we're taking one lead, touching the left, and the other lead will touch the right. That's it. Now, it does not matter if the red touches the left, or the right, vice versa, it doesn't make a difference. Just take the leads to the sensor. Now to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to use alligator clips. Again, you don't have to do this by any means. And also don't forget you, you can perform this test while the uh, solenoid valve is still attached to the transmission. I'm just doing this uh, because uh, for me to film that would be very, very, very difficult. Okay, let's just clean this up. So again, one lead goes to this guy. Now a good valve should read, on average, 3 to 10 ohms is a pretty good reading. If you don't see a reading here, the valve is bad. Or if it's incredibly, incredibly high, typically then the valve uh, may be bad. But that being said, we have 13, 13.4 ohms. That's acceptable. I'm not in that three to 10 on average, but I'm perfectly happy with that. That doesn't concern me that much. But this is the first test. The next test is to test the valve. Now, how do we do that? Let me clean this up. But again, this is the first thing you want to do to see what the resistance is like. Now, the next test is to see if this valve moves back and forth. Now, how do we do that? We just apply battery voltage to the valve. Now you can use the car battery for example. In my case I have one of these RC battery packs that push out pretty close to 12 volts. So all that we're doing is taking the power from here to the bat from the battery to the uh, solenoid. Again you can do this while it's still attached to the transmission. No need to remove it. So here we go. Again, alligator clips. This, we have to be careful, make sure that these guys don't cross. We should have some, let me flip this over. And here we go. Okay, hear that? Let's move this up. Now, I'm not sure if you can see that. Look toward the top at the 11 o'clock position. See how that moves? So this verifies 
that the valve is working correctly. Now, if you do this test, the valve does not move, your valve is bad. If you do this test and it's very, very sluggish, then that's a very good indication that it's going to go very, very soon. The other thing you want to check is the passages in here. Make sure that it's, everything is clean. There's no dirt, grime, oil, anything like that at all. Same with this little passage right here. Make sure everything is nice and clean. Now lastly, when you reinstall this, make sure that you have a new gasket. I do not. In this case, I don't have a problem with this valve. I'm just doing a how-to, but I really should purchase another gasket. I just don't have one right now. So when I reinstall everything, uh, later on I'm going to have to order a new gasket because I don't want this to leak any transmission fluid. But those are the main points. Check for resistance or you can just jump right to this, to the battery test if you want to. Uh, but again, you should see that clear movement. It's not sluggish, nothing like that whatsoever. Now when you're ready to reinstall the feed pipe, make sure that the screened end is inserted into the transmission. So this is the screened end on the other end it is not okay so screening transmission okay let's also check the harness connector make sure it's nice and clean no oil dirt etc and then looking at the harness connector as you can see it's clear of any grease grime oil you want a nice clean connector Now when you reinstall the fasteners, you don't need to over torque these. They're only around 9-10 foot-pounds from the factory. So just give it a good snug and you'll be perfectly fine. There's no need to put a lot of brute strength into reinstalling this. So as you can see, testing this valve is quite simple. Again, all of these tests you can do while it's still attached to the transmission. In my case, just easier removing it and showing you how it all works. If this is something that helped you, you're looking for other transmission videos, I'll include a playlist that um, probably within the next day or so I will have. And on that playlist will be other transmission videos and maybe the, we can help you somewhere else along the line. So that being said, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.